Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2020 video. Now, I know a lot of you guys are excited for VGC Season or Series 3 coming out in like, what is it, like two weeks? I know Collinsville's next week, so uh, it's gonna be a completely different format past that regional. In fact, like two days after the regional, we're gonna be entering this new format where the Kanto starters and the Alolan starters are going to be legal. And I realized something. One of my favorite ways to play VGC back in the day, back in 2018, that isn't too far ago, was to play control teams. Now, control teams can also go under the name of defensive teams or um, dirty BS teams, I guess. <laughs> no, it's not really. Some people get really frustrated playing against it, and that's kind of the point. You really, really get to tilt your opponent while playing a control team, and the timer mechanics uh, of this generation of VGC and Pokemon uh, actually sort of lend themselves to making control a little bit more viable. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be teaching you how I build control teams and how I think control might actually be able to make an appearance in this uh, series of VGC because previously it wasn't really viable. We had too few Pokemon in VGC 2019. Uh, it just didn't work because of how hyper offensive that format is. But uh, this format actually allows you to play a little bit more defensively, not as defensively as 2018 would have allowed, but uh, I'll explain everything I mean in a couple minutes. Also, before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am actually uh, selling stickers now on my channel. Now, it's just, it, you don't have to buy them, you don't have to buy them, but um, I'm going to be putting out some sticker designs. They're all going to be VGC related stuff, some funny jokes, uh, some inside jokes on the channel. Uh, and, you know, just buying them helps support the channel. They're going to be on my Teespring, and you might actually see them listed below this video. This is the first design. It's uh, the Dolmen design. Dolmen is actually the French name for Stonejourner, and there was just this inside joke in my live stream. I was using this French Stonejourner team, and, like, the Stonejourner was just the star of the show, and the chat just kept saying, like, yeah, Dolmen, Dolmen. So here we have the official Dolmen, <laughs> the official Dolmen sticker. So if you guys want to order that, support the channel. It's going to be in the link down below and also in the storefront down below um i'll be putting out some more designs i have a couple cool ideas just keep an eye on that as the days go by i'll be plugging them as they come out if you like this standpoint time make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more pokemon content and let's get into it so let me explain what control is here's an example of a control team uh from 2018 and this team actually won collinsville so you know it's kind of coming full circle it's kind of coming full circle collinsville is in a couple of weeks this team won collinsville in 2018 as you can see the team is very very defensive and you might if you're new to vgc you might not understand how it's defensive so i'll go ahead and explain it you, as you can see the scrafty has a careful nature and assault vest intimidate Low Kick, Fake Out, Foul Play, and Stone Edge. Stone Edge is actually pretty interesting for the format. Um, this Kartana is running Grassium Z. It's got Leaf Blade, Knock Off, Substitute, Detect. This Tapu Fini is kind of like the heart and soul of the control playstyle, along with the Manectric. And uh, to an extent, this bad boy right here. So Tapu Fini has a Timid Nature, Choice Scarf, Misty Surge, Moonblast, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, and Soak. Now, this... This part of it is a little bit strange. Tapu Fini tend to be a little bit more speed control oriented on control teams, but I'd like to imagine that um, when Alvin was playing this team, uh, he was playing to the expectations of his opponents, thinking, okay, I'm going to get Icy Winded, I'm going to get Nature's Madness, and then instead they just got Choice Scarf soaked and knocked out by either one of these two Pokemon. Uh, next up, we have Porygon Z with Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Trick Room, Recover, Sassy Nature, Eevee Light, making it disgustingly bulky in the ability download, boosting its stats a bit. Manectric, Timid Nature, Volt Switch, Overheat, Snarl, and Protect. Now, Snarl is going to be a big part of this uh, team composition, and I'll explain in a minute. Uh, and we have a Snorlax, which is running a Relaxed Nature and Aya Papa Berry, the ability Gluttony, Frustration, Belly Drum, Recycle, and High Horsepower. So, essentially, what this team is meant to do is it has two modes it has Bulky. I am going to set up in your face with a Snorlax and there's nothing you can do about it because you're going to get intimidated by Mega Manectric and your special attack is going to get dropped by Snarl and you're going to get intimidated by this bad boy and I'm going to get my Trick Room up, Belly Drum up, and you can't do anything about it. Like, you, you have no choice. You have to either knock out this Snorlax with your garbage poo-poo attack stat uh, or you're just going to have to take the onslaught of Trick Room, Belly Drum, Snorlax attacks. Uh, and then there's also the full offensive aspect of it with the Choice Scarf, Tapu Fini, and uh, Grassium Z, Kartana gimmick that he's got going on here. Uh, however, in a normal control team, this guy would just be full speed control with Nature's Madness to cut the attack in half, or to cut the HP stat in half and allow uh, for the other Pokemon to pick up KOs a little bit easier. And Kartana is a welcome addition to uh, control teams. Usually you have a very offensive Grass type on the team or a very defensive 
grass type uh, either one really works as long as there's a grass type and it, it works so as you can see control team is basically about uh, having full control of the field manipulating your opponent's stats through things like um, snarl and intimidate uh, and using speed control tactics like trick room or icy wind to just allow yourself to literally just have full control of the field and that's that's honestly something that i really like uh, it's really really nice for my play style i typically play control however in the past couple of formats i haven't been able to uh, because it just wasn't really viable but uh, i'll be going into why i think it's going to be viable in series three right now so if we look here um, we actually got a couple of really important additions to control, being Alolan Persian, uh, Alolan Ninetales, and Incineroar. Incineroar being the biggest, biggest addition to control uh, that could actually make it viable in the format. So what control does, like I said, is just have full control of the field, whether it be through speed control, uh, changing stats, or just allowing yourself to set up in your opponent's face and giving them very little they can do about it. So. The way you play control typically has a couple of parts. You want a bulky water type most of the time, which is, uh, as you can see here, you know, they had the Tapu Fini. Um, you want a very, very offensive Pokemon, and there are a couple of options. You know, you have Gigantamax Snorlax, you have Gyarados, which can do some Moxie shenanigans. Uh, you have Gorilla Tactic Star Manitan, which isn't as bulky, but still disgustingly, disgustingly offensively powerful. Uh, we could use like a Weakness Policy Tyranitar or just an offensive Duraludon. Uh, those Pokemon all lend very well to being supported in a control team. Uh, we also have the Intimidators, which are going to be Pokemon that can sort of disrupt the battlefield with their Intimidate ability. Gyarados isn't going to be the best option for this, considering um, it does much better in an offensive position. But with the addition of Incineroar, we actually got a Pokemon that can pivot reliably, whether it be through U-Turn or even more devastatingly powerful parting shot because you're lowering the attack and the special attack on the way out as well as on the way in um and it can also fake out which is really really cool on top of that it's a fire type so um while arcanine could actually work on a control team i forgot to include him because he does get snarl and he does get will-o-wisp to stop them from being really really powerful on the offensive or in their offensive stats whether it be uh physical attack or special attack um Incineroar actually lends itself much better to the format, however you could run either one of these two Pokemon as well, or even an Arcanine if you're feeling it, however I, I really feel like Incineroar is the best option. Uh, I personally am a big fan of Trapping Pokemon, uh, Trapping Pokemon is, the Trapping Pokemon is like one of the biggest parts of the team, in my opinion. You don't have to run a Trapping Pokemon as you can see, um, Alvin didn't here. And, uh, honestly, the only good trapping Pokemon in this format is Gothitel. I, you know, shout out to Doug Trio for sticking around in OU and singles, but, uh, the reason that this thing can't trap is, it's, it's like, there are so many. One Arena Trap is its only trapping ability, and it doesn't actually affect opponents that are airborne, whether it be through, uh, flying typing or the ability Levitate. Uh, where Gothitel, it just affects everything except for ghost types and other Pokemon with Shadow Tag. Uh, and on top of that, Gothitel's stupidly, stupidly bulky. 70 HP, 95 defense, 110 special defense. Hell yeah, this thing's a great trapping Pokemon. Where Dugtrio's got like 35 HP and just speed and offense. So it's not it's not really lending itself to a defensive playstyle. Um, and yeah, so next up, I personally am a big fan of grass types. And I feel like grass types are going to be very, very important in this format. Uh, especially for control teams because uh, my Lodic is going to be increasing in usage so so much since it's a direct counter to Intimidate Incineroar given it has that ability competitive that will actually boost its special attack and because it's naturally faster than Incineroar it can actually do a number to that thing where you know grass types like Rotomo, Rillaboom, uh, and Venusaur can actually do a number to Milotic, and grass types like Ferrothorn, which also have the steel typing and great defensive stats, can wall it for days. It's it's really, really nice to have a grass type on this team. So what I have here, I, I should have explained this, is just a bunch of Pokemon that fill these roles very, very nicely, and the way you're going to want to build a control team is by building as a defensive as a team as you can, while also having very, very good offensive potential, uh, whether it be through setup Pokemon or just really, really powerful damage dealers. So the way you would support this team is with those Intimidators and with those Snarl Pokemon, with those Pokemon that have access to things like screens, like this guy, Ninetales, has Aurora Veil. Uh, Grim Snarl has access to 
fake out. It has access to Thunder Wave. It has access to fake tears. It's such a great support Pokemon. Uh, and on top of that, it, it also can run something like Spirit Break to lower the special attack stats. So once again, a great example of a Pokemon that can just take control of the battlefield, make sure they're not doing that much damage. Manectric is a decent option if you're trying to run something like a Gyarados control team where Gyarados is your main damage dealer and you want to make sure it doesn't get hurt. Because Manectric is one of the few fast Pokemon in the format with Snarl, it also gets Lightning Rod to protect Gyarados, so you could run something along the, or along the lines of a very fast and bulky uh, Snarl, Bolt Switch, um, Flamethrower to deal with you know the occasional Grass type, but um, so, something along the lines of that. Literally, that's all it needs. Snarl, Protect, Bolt Switch, and like a final move, whether it be uh, Light Screen or just a coverage option. Uh, I'm personally a big fan of Eerie Impulse because Eerie Impulse is stronger than Snarl. It actually lowers one specific Pokemon's uh, special attack step by two. I actually used it in uh, my personal control team that I made in VGC 2018 that I got some decent results with um, because Kamoa was a really, really powerful Pokemon in VGC 2018, and my team was really, really weak to it. Kamoa had the ability Soundproof, meaning that Snarl wouldn't affect it, and I wouldn't lower its special attack after it went for its... Uh, Omni boosting move, but Eerie Impulse would actually just not only undo the special attack boost, but also completely, completely nerf the heck out of uh, Kamoa. It would just throw its special attack stat into the ground. Uh, and also, Raichu is a pretty decent Pokemon on or on control uh, support wise because it does get Fake Out and it does get Nuzzle and it does get Lightning Rod. But overall, I feel like um, everything before it is a pretty decent option. Uh, now. I'm going to go into the basic competition, competition, composition of a control team and uh, give you an example of what I've built. So here's a pretty, I mean, like no one is really playing control right now, except for me, because I've been really excited about Incineroar coming back. Uh, and this is what I think a standard control team should look like in this format. You might see some faster ones, but I'm personally uh, more inclined to playing defensively and slower because while you guys might not like it, timer stall is a legitimate win condition. So if you end up in a position where you can't really KO all all four of your Pokemon or all four of your opponent's Pokemon, but you still have all four of your Pokemon and you can just kind of whittle them down, uh, control is great for playing to the timer because everything's so bulky, you have such great control of the battlefield. I'm saying control so much in this video, but you have such great control of the battlefield. Um, everything on this team has at least a little bit of physical defense because of how physically oriented this format is, and I'll be going over how this team works as well as showing you some replays. So here's my control team that I built uh, with these pieces I've made. As you can see, uh, my support Pokemon are this Intimidate Incineroar and this uh, Grim Snarl with Light Clay, uh, Spirit Break, Thunder Wave, Reflect, and Light Screen. Um, now I'll go. I'll be going over the rules one at a time, I guess. So Incineroar is a very bulky, bulky Pokemon. I have max HP, uh, 12 attack with an adamant nature, 84 defense, 140 special defense, and 20 speed. Now, the physical bulk actually allows me to take a high horsepower from Jolly Excadrill after Intimidate and always live it. The um, attack is just dumped, like there's no rhyme or reason to it. I just had leftover stats. Uh, the special defense allows me to take a modest Max Special Attack Rotom's Hydro Pump. That's kind of huge. The fact that I can take that is disgusting. Uh, and the speed is literally just to outspeed um, other Incineroar. You see, a smart Incineroar player runs 4 speed to outspeed Incineroar. A uh, cheeky Incineroar player runs 12 speed to outspeed the smart Incineroar player. And I run 20 speed because I'm stupid. Uh, <laughs> it just lets me outspeed all of them with the fake out. Gothitelle is running max physical defense uh, with Fake Out, Trick Room, Psychic, and Protect. However, you could drop Protect for Heal Pulse to help support other Pokemon on the team, as well as play to the timer. Uh, Shadow Tag allows me to make sure none of my opponents can switch, short of them being Shadow Tag Pokemon, Ghost Types, or having pivoting moves like Parting Shot, U-Turn, or Volt Switch. And it has Nagua Berry to have it just sit on the field forever. Uh, the Trick Room is great for supporting things like Ferrothorn or Snorlax, which... Um, you know, while they, while Ferrothorn isn't the strongest thing under Trick Room, it can kind of survive outside Trick Room. Snorlax pretty much needs it. Um, I'll get into why in a second, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious why. Uh, and as as well as, um, you know, setting up Trick Room and preventing, eh, I can't speak, and preventing my opponents from switching. Um, this actually makes it so because they can't switch, they can't reset their stats short of having the move Haze. And you know, most people don't carry Haze in their team, which is really really nice for me. So, yeah, it's really, really good for control. 
Uh, my Lodic, I'm running a very, very physically defensive set, uh, but I also am running competitive. Uh, and the reason that is, is because a uh, plus two ice beam without any attack or special attack investment will always one shot uh, four HP Dragapult. And that's really all I'm looking for. Uh, the physical defense is really, really important for taking hits. And the speed is just to make sure that after I paralyze a Dragapult with like Thunder Wave from Grimmsnarl, uh, I'll outspeed it and kill it with a single ice beam. That's really all it does. Um, it's also a great counter to Intimidate Pokemon or uh, Snarl Pokemon or whenever I just feel like I'm going to get one of my stats lowered. Uh, my Lodic is a very bulky Pokemon that can use Recover uh, to stay on the field for a long time as well as dish out a decent amount of damage while it sits there. Grim Snarl, I went over this pretty much. Prankster, Spirit Break, Thunder Wave, Reflect, Light Screen. It makes things live longer. It's an amazing Pokemon. I love this thing. Ferrothorn is just full physical defense. I don't have a grass move on him, but I do have Leech Seed. Um, he, he functions more as a defensive grass type anyways. I didn't want to run Power Rip because I hate missing. Body Press, in my opinion, is a very, very nice move for him because it just allows him to deal consistent damage with his really nice physical defense stat. Uh, and the ability for this thing to sit in the field forever is really nice. And Gigantamax Norlax, I am just running Impish or Relaxed Nature Max Physical Defense for attack investment because after a Belly Drum, uh, your max move is still going to be one-shotting most things in the field. Uh, and this, you know, like I said, like being super defensive is amazing for this format. Um, some people might call this a stall team, but honestly, this team, I, I wouldn't call stall. You can stall if you need to. That's like your second win condition. Your first win condition, first and foremost, is to get your Snorlax in, get your Milotic in, and start dishing out damage. Um, or you can just wear them down like a stall team, but I, I'm personally more inclined to getting one of these two in uh, in every game and all, you know, just dishing out huge damage, dealing with so many things in the field while uh, sort of frustrating my opponent in a best of three set. Um, you might tilt them to the point where they don't even really want to play anymore. They kind of realize, like, this isn't fun to play against. And, you know, that might not be the funnest thing, but I personally I personally really enjoy doing that sometimes. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just a bad person, but that, that's the gist of control teams. I'm going to be going over some replays I got. I only have, like, three, and one of them is really short. Uh, and I actually messed up in one of them, but I'll be, I'll be going over what I do. So... I lead off with, uh, well, I guess I should explain the lead. So in team preview, I see a Durant uh, and I see a Togekiss. And I think to myself, okay, I can really mess up this Durant right now if I lead off with a super physically defensive Milotic and a Grim Snarl who can set up uh, Reflect. And then my Milotic can just, you know, Dynamax and go for the max moves. And it's going to be living everything because I have double HP, the Reflect's up, and I have so much physical defense. So that's all I go for. I mean, like, the only thing I'm scared of on that team, Milotic wise, is uh, Rotom Mo, which isn't that big of a threat. So he ends up leading off with the Milotic and the Togekiss. I go for a light screen because there are two special attackers in front of me and you know the Togekiss stays in and tries to go for a flinch. It doesn't actually land it. Uh, so I get my light screen up, take like no damage. I get my ice beam. Now this is really lucky. I'll admit this. I proc their weakness policy um, and they end up lowering my speed, but I'm going to explain why that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, while yes, they could have Dynamax, they wouldn't have been able to one shot me the next turn and I would have been able to deal out massive damage to them anyways. Uh, as I'm going to reveal right now, I could literally just go for a Thunder Wave. I failed it on purpose because I, I felt bad. I felt bad that I got the freeze. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to show them that like, hey, you know, I can go for a Thunder Wave here. It wouldn't have mattered that much anyways. Uh, so yeah, I do that. Uh, and I they go for a Muddy Water, lowering my accuracy and giving me another special attack boost. Um, and I end up just going for the Ice Beam, taking out that Togekiss. Doesn't... You know, it's not on the field anymore and not a big threat. And at this point, uh, the game is pretty much lost for them. And here's the reason. When you Dynamax, that accuracy drop doesn't matter. That's why Milotic is such an amazing Pokemon in this format. You can literally just get all the accuracy drops in the world, boosting Milotic to disgustingly high special attack stats, and then just Dynamax and Nene on them, to be honest. Because And that's exactly what I do here. I Dynamax my Milotic, I set up a Reflect to make sure I'm not taking any damage. The Max Steel Spike knocks out my Grim Snarl, but it's not a big deal at all. And I just toss off, I mean, they miss a Hypnosis, but I toss off this uh, <laughs> this Max Geyser. Um, and they send out their Incineroar, Incineroar's got Intimidate, of course. They're gonna <laughs> give me another boost, I'm now at Max Special Attack. Uh, and here, I just go for a Protect, because I expect a Fake Out here. They're not gonna Fake Out my Milotic. They go for the Hypnosis, they do land it, uh, which is unfortunate for me, but, you know whatever. <laughs> they land another Muddy Water, they go for a Darkest Lariat, um, and because I'm such physically, I'm such a physically defensive spread, I take it like a champ. Uh, I wake up the next turn, 
knock him out. And uh, at this point, I believe they just forfeit the match because they know they can't win. And yeah, so that, that's a good example of as to how control is played. Um, well, not like a prime example, but a good example as to like the physically defensive aspect of this team. Next up, uh, we have probably my favorite match of the bunch. I only have like three, um, but this one was fun because the irony of the situation, I'll explain it after the fact. I'll explain it after the fact. Um, I mess up here. I actually gave my Snorlax the wrong nature. I meant to run relax, but I had Impish at the time. So the wiki berry ends up confusing it. So I lead off Grimmsnarl and Cinderer because it does two things. It can allow me to fake out an opposing Incineroar or whatever is leading off next to what is probably going to Dynamax turn 1. And it allows me to get pretty much free screens up because I know that my Incineroar is going to be faster than whatever Pokemon they lead off with, at least in the fake out department. Because no one runs as much speed on their Incineroar as I do, at least, you know, right now. So I get my Intimidates off. He gets his Intimidates off. Um, he Dynamaxes the Gyarados, which I know I can live because I'm he's at minus 1 and I'm a freaking bulky Incineroar. Uh, so... He goes for the fake out. Uh, it turns out he is faster than me, which is a little, a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but it's, but it's fine. Oh, it turns out I actually parting shotted. Okay, so I made a bad play, but I still got rewarded because I get the parting shot on the Gyarados, and then I get the fake out off, and then I get my screens up. My bad. And then, as you can see, he's stuck in a situation here because I got that pivot out into my Gothitelle. His Gyarados is at half attack. His Incineroar is at minus one attack. I pretty much have free turns to set up here like he can't do that much damage to me and i can set up so much so i get my snorlax in the reflex up he's at half attack look how much this max geyser in the rain does it does 18 to 21 percent like that's that's amazing i love this team so much he goes for the parting shot in my goth tail doesn't matter too much he sends in the dragapult and this is the point where i mess up uh because you know i set up my trick room at the end of the turn i get my belly drum up gluttony prox and confused and here's, here's where um, things get a little bit unfortunate. I recognize that uh, my only good offensive Pokemon in this matchup is Snorlax. So regardless of what happens, I have to Dynamax this confused Pokemon. So I go for it. He misses a Will-O-Wisp, which is really lucky for me. But I think at plus four attack, I would have been able to one-shot the Dragon Ball anyways with the move I go for. I do hit myself in confusion. Um, and I go for a Psychic. He goes for the Waterfall. Doesn't do that much. He goes for the Dragon Claw. Doesn't do that much. And I actually do get unconfused the next turn and I make the right call I go for my max darkness which is coming off a of darkest lariat and I kill the dragapult while also lowering this thing's special defense meaning that psychic's going to be doing more damage and this is again like I said like I have so much control over the field that Gyarados isn't given an opportunity to escape and at this point I recognize uh, the incinerator is going to come in and it's going to be going for a fake out my gothitel what I want to do first and foremost is make sure this Gyarados stays nerfed until the end of the game so I want to knock out that Incineroar on the turn it goes for the fake out on my Gothitelle. And that's exactly what I do. He goes for the fake out. I let him. Uh, I go for the G-Max Replenish. I don't get my barrier back, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I would have just gotten confused anyways. Uh, and he goes for the Waterfall. At this point, he has no Pokemon he can switch Gyarados out for. So he's just stuck uh, on my battlefield, essentially. Uh, now Snorlax is going to go down here because Toxtricity can get a free Overdrive off. Um, and Gyarados isn't really a threat. So I protect here to make sure Gothitelle stays as healthy as possible. Snorlax goes down to the Punk Rock Overdrive, which is fine. He gets the special attack boost. I send out my Grimmsnarl, uh, and Grimmsnarl can do a couple of things here. Uh, Grimmsnarl could go for a Spirit Break, or it could go for a Light Screen. And Gothitelle 100% has to set up Trick Room to make sure that I can actually go on the offensive with my Gothitelle. So I do just that. I set up a Light Screen. He does, like, no damage to me. <laughs> Overdrive is going to be doing a decent chunk because he's at plus one, but now that Trick Room's up, uh, I can actually focus down this Toxicity uh, with Spirit Breaks and um, Psychics, and all I have to do is kind of hope that he doesn't get a crit, which um, with the Reflect would help me out a little bit anyways. So I end up doubling into that Toxicity and get nothing out of the turn because he protects, which is a really good call by my opponent. Does like nothing with the Waterfall again. I just do the same thing next turn, and I'm not going to pick up the KO because I'm at minus one special attack. Um, however, this will allow me to tank the hit with my Gothitelle, get my berry up, and, you know, once again, this thing isn't doing anything to me. I can send him my Incineroar, which is going to be nerfing that Gyarados into the ground even more. He goes for the Protect, it's whatever, I targeted into this thing anyways. And, uh, this turn I'll be able to, um, actually just KO that Toxtricity because I have one turn left to Trick Room. And, my opponent is a smart person. Is a smart person. You know, I'm a little bit upset. I missed the KO on that roll. Keep that in mind. You know, I missed the KO on a roll, I think, because he lived on 1%. You know, that's that's a little bit annoying. I'd be I'd be annoyed too. Uh, so he goes to the waterfall. 
he gets his moxie boost so now he's at now he's at half attack and keep in mind my incinerator stupid bulky dummy thick to be honest where's that incinerator spread where's that incinerator spread there he is dummy thick incinerator max max hp 84 defense um <laughs> uh and uh he goes to the waterfall he doesn't pick up the ko or the flinch uh because i am dummy thick incinerator and I end up getting the KO, and he goes, I, I say, you know, good game, well played. And he says, F off, haha. I'm like, yeah, that's that's funny, dude. And he goes, that's a roll, GG, whatever. I'm like, full defense. The irony of the situation, uh, him telling me to F off, is that I built that team. That's literally my team. Uh, I built the team with my buddy Yoku in a video the other day. And that's just kind of funny that I faced a guy using my team, and he didn't realize that I was on my ult. So he was just, you know, he was cursing out the dude that, that built the team he's using fun stuff fun stuff um but yeah i do have one more replay it's it's just it's just ah it, it's just like me using the team they forfeit after the final turn it doesn't really matter uh or they forfeit after like the first turn so it doesn't really matter but yeah uh that's that's control teams in a nutshell uh i want to know what you guys think about control teams in this format personally i'm a big fan of control i i feel like it's one of the um it's it's one of the gameplay styles that suits me the best with that, I'm going to call it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. If you guys want to support the channel, uh, check out my Patreon. Uh, check out the sticker store uh, linked in the description down below. But, yeah, with that, I'm going to call it. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.